Hi everyone, welcome to Hunter Gatherer Cooking. Hi everyone, welcome to Hunter Gatherer Cooking. Matt from Grove Gamers, finally, finally. Yeah. <laughs> Matt from Grove Game has kindly invited me into his home tonight, where we're going to be doing some ammunition reloading. Right, right, over to you, Matt. What are we doing? Right, uh, today we're going to be basically reloading some ammunition. Um, this is a casing which uh, has been fired already, you can see from here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to turn it back into a uniform shape and we're going to turn it into one of these, which is another uh, cartridge ready to go. The benefits of foam loading are you can tune and actually get the cartridge matched to your rifle so that it is uh, specifically accurate to the gun itself. Factory ammunition is, is pretty good but it's made on mass and to much broader tolerances. With these, you can get them down to minimalist tolerances so they are as accurate as possible. I mean, it can really be a, a hobby in itself, just uh, uh, reloading, but um, we're, well, I, I'm doing it for deer stalking. As long as it goes where I want it to go, I don't need, to, need it to go in the same hole every single time. I just need it to be accurate and consistent. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So this is a spent casing, okay, this is actually a 3006, but today we're reloading for a 6.555. Um, you can see here the primer has been uh, indented, uh, there's no bullet in it obviously, but the casing itself is fouled inside. Now whilst the outside isn't too much of a problem, it can look as grubby as you want it to, uh, it's the inside that matters. What we need to do is we need to clean the inside out so that it is as uniform as possible. We also need to reshape the brass, because at the point of uh, ignition and the bullet going out this whole casing will swell to uh, expand to fit the chamber sometimes it can stretch and sometimes it can sort of completely fill the chamber so we need to resize this piece of brass reprime it clean the inside and then reload it with uh, gunpowder and a bullet head now this here is a meat this is called a media tumbler what this does is this takes um, this takes a casing like this, which is all grubby and fouled, and it tumbles it through this, which this all this is, is a corn cob media. So just corn cob, and it's been uh, sort of um, coated with a special sort of, um, uh, basically special coating just to help it uh, clean the brass really. Now what this does is this vibrates, uh, and you leave it on for a couple of hours, and it will turn grubby casings like that into clean casings like this. From here, we have to take it to the next stage, which is to, the, um, to remove the primer, re-stretch the brass, and, um, and refill it. Can we turn this on? Yeah. Right, so here we've got a clean casing. This has been in the media for a couple of hours. It's, um, it's nice and clean on the outside and a lot of the fouling has been removed from the inside. What we need to do now, we need to remove the primer here so we can fit a new one. We need to also re-size uh, the brass so that it is back to the, the size that it should be before it went off. Right, so we've got our clean casing here. Okay, so we need to stick this in the sizing die, which is this tool here. What I need to do first of all is this will be have some, potentially have some sharp edges on it. So I'm just gonna remove these with this deburring tool. I'm now, going to, I'm now going to grease the casing with some imperial wax, which will help it go in and out of the die smoothly. So what have you just done? So here we have the resized case. So that has now been put back to the position it was in before the explosive event which made the bullet go out. We've removed the primer, the old primer is here, and we now have a sized casing which is ready to be reloaded. Well this is the primer pocket. I need to clean this so that we can uh, seat the new primer. And I'm just using this primer cleaner tool here from K&M. Stick it in there, give it a couple of squeaks. And now it's nice and clean. All right. Right, so we've got a clean case here, clean primer pocket. What I need to do now is to make sure this brass cartridge is the right size, okay? I'm gonna use this tool here, which is a gauge. I pop it in here, 
Now what happens when you fire the cartridge, the brass can sometimes stretch, and you can see that on the gauge here, this is okay. So this is a perfectly acceptable cartridge, and that should cycle well through the rifle. These are the primers, okay, these initiate the explosion. This is what the firing pin hits and pushes a hot charge into the actual uh, gunpowder, which then makes it go off. So this is what uh, basically initiates the explosion inside the breech. Let's get these in here. And then we just try and get them the right way around. Best way to is just give them a shake like this. There'll be a couple which need turning over. Right, we've got a nice clean uh, piece of brass here, the clean primer pocket. We need to recharge this primer pocket. So we've got our hand primer tool here. The gate is open and we just roll a primer in there. You can see, there it is. So all we need to do is put that in here and it's just a case of squeezing it in. Twisting it to make sure it's in there evenly. And there we go, a deep seated primer. Right, so we've got our clean casing with the primer. We need to charge it now. So we take our uh, funnel and we need to charge it with the, uh, the actual powder itself. Now the powder I'm using is this, brilliant. We, um, this powder throw here will give you an approximate charge and we need to then refine it using a trickler here. So I'm gonna throw a charge now. That should give me approximately 46 grains of powder. 46.2. Now my uh, load data here, which I've put together, says I need 46 and a half grains of RS62 powder. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is trickle the balance of this powder into this uh, bit here. So what I'm going to do now is put this, uh, this fill the casing, really. So this is a trickle tube. This allows you to get a uniform, compacted powder load. Uh, if you chuck it all in at once, like, uh, like chucking a load of sticks on a fire, it can bunch up and be really high, and that means that you can end up compressing the load inadvertently uh, when you actually come to see the bullet. So what I'm doing here, I put my tube on here, and I just fill it ever uh, so gently. I'm filling this on a piece of white paper so that I can see if any grains fall out or spill out because uh, even a couple of these small little sticks of uh, uh, powder can make quite a big difference to your velocity. So here we have a case with a primer, it's been charged with powder. I now need to add the projectile which is this solid copper monolithic bullet head. Now the way I do this it has to be a very specific uh, depth and length for it to be the, the most accurate. So I add the bullet here. And this is called an arbor press. This makes this, partic this particular um, die, as it's called, make sure the bullet is perfectly in line seated so there's no concentricity issues at all. And it's just a simple case, making sure it's steady and there. So it just pushes it down a measured amount? Yeah. Right, so now we've seated the bullet head, we need to check our cartridge overall length, because that is gonna dictate, or can dictate, the accuracy. If you've refined your loads to, to an extent where you've got it absolutely spot on, maintaining consistency is the key. So if you add it to our calipers, and run up here. Now I want mine at 3.1, which means I'm six hundred thousandths of an inch too long. So what I do is I come to my gauge here, I reduce this six hundred thousandths,
Wow. Now that is spot on. I know exactly where it's going to go and I've got the confidence, more importantly, the confidence in where it's going to go. So Matt's going to continue to make 49 more of those. Uh, the rest of the playlist is going to be about going out, going on to a store. Matt talks about his, um, his kit and his rifle and things, so check those out. If you're new to the Hunter Gatherer Cooking channel, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you soon.